Hello. Pre-algebra, Mr. Lawrence here with your flipped lesson. Today we are talking about permutations and combinations. I think this is some of the coolest stuff in math because when I figure it out, I feel so smart. And it shatters all these like elementary ideas that I might have in my head about, oh, I should add things together. Nah, the key is the fundamental counting principle. We're going to be using it all the time on this problems. And you're going to be able to figure crazy things out. Now, the most important thing when doing a permutation or a combination is you have to ask yourself, does the order matter? Sorry, I need a little room here. Uh, does the order matter? Does the order matter? Does the order matter? And if the order matters, it's a permutation. Perms the order matters. Okay, that's the most important thing. The order matters. In every problem, I am going to set it up. I'm going to pick an ending. I'm going to change the order and see if I get a different result. If I get a different result, the order matters and I'm dealing with a permutation. All right, if the order doesn't matter, then I have a combination. They're done very similarly. Order does not matter. Okay, so you have to determine first if the order matters. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do this. The classmates of yours that aren't watching these videos, they're going to be lost. They're not going to know how to do this, and they are going to fall far behind. How many different ways can the letters in the word star be rearranged? Well, I've got S-T-A-R. And you know, maybe your teacher might write on the top of a paper you did really well on Hey, you're a really shooting star. All right. That is one way, right? Now, obviously, I could go S A T R S A R T, and I could keep going and doing that. Now, I'm not going to do all that, but I've got a better way to do it using the fundamental counts pr principle. But before I can actually do it, I have to determine if this is a perm permutation or a combination. So I am going to rearrange it one time. I'm going to rearrange the letters this way. France. Now remember a minute or two ago I said, hey, your teacher liked your paper and wrote on top of it, you're a real shooting star. Would it be the same thing if the teacher wrote on top of the paper, hey, you're a real rat? Are you really rats? Would it make any sense? Would you know what they meant? No. It's a different outcome. Because I changed the order, this and got a different outcome. This is a permutation. I like to call them perms. All right, this is a permutation. And here's how you do a permutation. It's real simple. Ask yourself, how many things am I choosing? Well, I have to choose four letters. Because I'm choosing four letters, I'm gonna make four little spaces, four little line segments, okay? For the first space, how many choices do I have for my first letter? Well, some of you are thinking one, and that's not correct. I'm only going to choose one letter to go here, but I can choose from S, T, A, or R. So I have four choices. Now, once I've chosen one, let's say I chose R, then for the second space, there are only three letters left, A, T, and S. Once I've chosen the second letter, there are only two left and one left. Perms will always count down. Always count down. The fundamental counting principle tells me to multiply them, and I get 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 1 is 24. There are 24 different ways to rearrange the letters in the word star. Notice I wasn't necessarily worried about getting an actual word, but there are 24 different ways to rearrange those letters. So for the perm, the order matters. I rearrange two of the letters, or some of the letters, I got a different outcome, and I knew it was a perm. Okay, let's look at another situation. Twelve runners are in a race. The prizes for the race are as follows. First place, second place, third place. It's getting different amounts of money. In how many different ways can the twelve runners finish in the top three places? Well, let's ask ourselves, is this a perm? Does the order matter? Well, let's say that uh, Megan finished in first, and Stephen 
finished in second, and then Angela finished in third. Is that the same? Let me do something here. That is one possible outcome, right? Now I'm going to kick the same three people, but I'm going to put it in different places. Is that the same as Angela finishing in first, Stephen in second, and then Megan in third? If you're thinking it is the same, you're not talking to Megan. Megan in the first scenario gets a hundred dollars, but in the second scenario she only gets twenty-five. So you see, this is not the same outcome. Now somebody's thinking, well, Stephen got the same. Well, yeah, but Megan and Angela didn't. If Megan finished in first and she was accidentally handed the check for twenty-five dollars, and Angela finished in third and it was accidentally given the check for a hundred dollars, there'd be some problems there. People would be upset about that. So you notice I picked one possible outcome. I changed the order of that outcome. I didn't change the names, just change the order they appear. I got a different result. This is a perm, absolutely a permutation. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to figure out how many ways this can happen. How many things do I care about? Well, some of you are saying 12. I disagree. I want to know how many different ways it can finish in the top three places. So I do one, two, and three. All right. Well, how many runners can finish in first? Only one can at the start of the race. How many have the opportunity to? Twelve. Twelve runners finish in, uh, could finish in the, in the first place before the race begins. Once the race is over, there's only one, but right now there's, there's twelve. Okay, now, how many could finish in second? Well, in this case, there's only, um, there's only going to be 11 because you can't have a second place person until you have the first place person. And then consequently, you have a 10. What do you think I'm going to do with those three numbers? I'm going to multiply. Why am I going to multiply? Because of the fundamental counting principle. Yes. And 12 times 10, if you use my little 11 trick, it's easy. You get a 2, you get a 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. And then 1, or 132 times 10 ends up equaling 1,320. 1,320 different ways that these 12 runners could finish in the top three places. Two of the ways are listed above. One is Megan, Stephen, Angela, and the second one is Angela, Stephen, Megan. If you were to list all the possible ones, you need to know the names of all 12 runners, and you would have 1,320 different sets of three names. All right, let's go on down to this situation. Say, Mrs. Sturm gives you the list of, gives you the following list of 10 books. And you see the different names of the books there. Now, let me just make sure there's 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Good. You have to choose three of those books to read. How many different ways? Well, we need to know if it's a perm or a combo. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read uh, Rules of the Road. We're going to read The Hunger Games. And then we're going to read A Brief History of Time. But our friend decides to read The Hunger Games, Rules of the Road, and then A Brief History of Time. Is that the same thing? At the end, when they're both done with all three books, have they read the same exact material? Absolutely they have. This order does not matter. I picked one possible outcome, I changed that outcome, and I got the same thing. So this is a combo or a combination. I like to call them combos. All right, now we start a combo very much like the way we start a perm. We're choosing three books, so we go one, two, three. Now I need a fraction bar. And I put three spaces upstairs. I'm going to put three spaces downstairs. This is how I set up to solve a combo. All right. Now, right here, just like the perm, I start just like it. The first book I'm going to choose, I'm only going to choose one, but how many do I have to choose from? Ten. Once I've read Rules of the Road, then there are only nine books left to choose from, and then there are only eight. Now down here, this is the hard part. 
You see this spot here? I want you to put a one there. And then I want you to count until you run out of spaces. And there you go. This is the correct setup to solve a combination. Now, we're going to multiply here and here and down here and down here. But I'm not going to do 10 times 9 times 8 and 3 times 2 times 1 and then simplify the fraction. That is too much work. It is too difficult to do, especially when I can see that 3 can go into 3 one time and can go into 9 three times. 2 can go into 2 once and can go into 8 four times. 4 times 3 is 12, times 10 is 120 different ways we could choose three books. So think about, let's say Mrs. Durham did give that list. She could have 120 different students pick three different books to read. One kid might pick Rules of the Road, Hunger Games, and a Brief History of Time, but another kid might pick Rules of the Road, Hunger Games, and then Tears of a Tiger. And another kid might do Rules of the Road, Hunger Games, and The Great Gatsby, etc., etc., etc. There could be 120 students that could each pick a different set of three books. Okay, one more example for you. All right, a club has 20 members. They're going to choose a five-member committee to plan an upcoming party. How many different committees of five members are possible? Well, let's see, who's going to be on this committee? We can give names, or we can just do letters. Let's say A, B, C, D, E. Maybe that's Alice, Bob, Charlie, David, and Evelyn. Okay, that's one possible outcome for the committee. Let's change something. Let's say the committee, they misreport the committee, and they say it's this. I picked to use the same exact names, Alice, Bob, Charlie, Evelyn, and David. But I just changed the order of two of them. Did I get a different committee, or do I have the same exact five people planning the party? Yeah, I have the same exact five people. This is a combination again, and I like to call them combos. This is a combination. All right, I get ready to make my spaces. How many things am I choosing? I'm choosing five. One, two, three, four, five. And downstairs, I need one, two, three, four, five. All right, how many people could possibly be on the committee when I start? How many people have a chance to be on the committee? Well, before I've picked anybody, there are 20 people. So I've picked one person, now we're down to 19, and then down to 18, 17, and 16. I just count down until I run out of spaces. Here's the hard part. I start with one. I count all the way up to five. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do some canceling. I know that four goes into 16 four times. I know that three goes into 18 six times. And I know that five goes into 20 four times, and two goes into six, three times. So my math problem now, notice the denominator turned to all ones. When I divide by one, nothing happens, because I am multiplying all these, right? I should have shown that because of the fundamental counting principle. And so I'm multiplying, well, right now, my multiplication problem is 4 times 19 times 3 times 17 times 4. And I can go to a calculator on this. Let me bring it up here. There's my calculator. I'm not in scientific mode, but that's okay. 4 times 19 times 3 times 17 times for again. And there you go. There are, I'm going to write it down here, 15,504 different committees that this club could choose from. Isn't that crazy? I think that is so cool that I can be intelligent enough to figure that out. And you are intelligent enough to do it too. All right, that's your flip lesson. I did two perms and two combos. Tomorrow we'll get a little practice with it.
those of you that have watched the video and are good on it, you'll start the homework right away. And uh, those of you that need some instruction, well, you'll have to do the homework at home. All right, Mr. Lawrence, signing out. Good night, everybody.